Mandala Nail Art on an Essential Oil Diffuser by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I did just a pretty cool mandala pattern on a essential oil diffuser. So this essential oil diffuser is a smart diffuser so it can be controlled with your phone or with the buttons which me personally I like buttons, I don't know. But the thing that the fact that it can work with your phone is pretty cool. It also can work with the Alexa, the Amazon Alexa thing, which I don't have one of those, but I was reading on that and I, you know, if you have one of those, that's pretty cool as well. But the little diffuser is just a pretty cute little design and it has these rings, this kind of wavy circle pattern top on the top of it, which when I looked at it just seemed to kind of promote being painted with a mandala. So I decided to do that and I added lots of rhinestones. I was using rhinestones actually that I just kind of wanted to get, to get rid of. That probably sounds awful, but it definitely works for this. I just don't think they look good on nails. I don't know what the deal is with these rhinestones that I just, I'm not that thrilled with them, but they definitely look good on here. So I hope you guys like this and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So here is a diffuser that I will be showing you and it's, um, I'll put link, a link to it in the, in the description box below, but like I said, it's a smart diffuser, so it's got all kinds of fancy stuff that you can do with it, but it's, yeah, so it's really cute. It's got a kind of like a bamboo looking base to it. Don't mind me looking at other things at the same time. Um, but it's just, it's cute. It's simple. And I love how with essential oil diffusers, because they light up and they, a lot of them kind of glow different colors, they run through a stream of colors that if you paint the little lid on them, you can do all sorts of cool designs with them. So they're really, they're really something that's fun to paint. And if you've never painted something like this before, definitely give it a try. So the first thing I did is I'm just going to be painting that first circle going around the top and the outside of that out, the outermost little wavy thing, which isn't as easy set as done because it's not like there's a very distinct, easy to see line. You kind of have to just sort of work with it as you go around, which is why I added the dots to help guide me. But if you do make a mistake, the wonderful thing is, is that if you have a Q-tip with some isopropyl alcohol, you can use it like a little eraser and get rid of anything that is a mistake. So then I'm going to be painting eight little guidelines. So I'm going to do four. So go across, across, kind of like north, south, east, west, and then go halfway between each one to add northeast, southeast, northwest, southwest. You know, you get the point. And then sound that uh, I have that done. Those I just wanted to kind of put in there because they're going to help with the design that goes around the outside of it. I'm going to be doing the little design. There's not too much on the top of the diffuser. Since there are those wavy lines, you can't do a lot on the top of it, but I just went and I added little loops going around in a circle. So just loop, loop, loop going all the way around. And you can kind of use those guides if you want. Like if you say, well, I'm going to put four in each section. I didn't do that. I just decided that I was just going to paint them and see how they turned out. And it worked out fine. They fit in perfectly perfectly well, but you can do it however you like. The one thing I do want to mention while I have an opportunity right now is that I'm using multi-surface paint. So whenever you're painting something that has a slippery texture or doesn't absorb paint, you want to use multi-surface. So this is paint that is, um, when you go, it's craft paint, it's acrylic craft paint, but you want to find the stuff that says that it can be painted on glass, indoor, outdoor, can go in the dishwasher after it's cured. All of that, that's the kind of paint you want to use, especially for something like this. It's got, when it, it's an essential oil diffuser, it's going to get moist. It's going to have that mist going on around it. So you want it to be something very durable. So then in every other of those little loops, I just added a black polka dot with my multi-surface paint. I'm using the same paint for the whole thing. And then I know that I've painted another of these essential oil diffusers in the past, and I will... I'll put a link to that in the description box below, but I use the same paint for that one too. And then I added a little dot in the little crevice between each of the loop-de-loops, just a smaller dot, just something, the top of it, I wanted it to not just end in a circle. I wanted to have something a little bit more interesting. So I just decided a quick, a quick little, almost petal like pattern. So now once again, I'm adding guidelines. These are, or guide dots, I suppose in this circumstance. So in between each of those little guidelines we had before and halfway down the side, I added a little polka dot. So then I'm going to take and connect my guideline and my polka dot with a little curved line, just like that. So it makes a petal. So I'm gonna, there's going to be eight petals because we had eight of those little guidelines from that we made originally on after we had that circle done. So I'm going to be showing you how I do each of these petals and I speed it up so you don't have to watch me paint eight of these in pretty slow. So just make that those first two lines and then add a half circle that goes right inside of it that's much larger than the little ones that we did around the top of it and then make three petals. So these petals are um, more football shaped. So there's the first one and the second one. And when you're doing this, there is so much freedom. You don't have to follow the pattern I did. You don't have to do anything like the pattern I did. You can really, I wasn't looking at anything. I was just kind of 
going where the lines took me, I suppose you could say, and just sort of seeing how things fit together and making it work. So then in between the two, the three petals, I added a pull and two dots, and then I added some dots going through the rest of it. So that's how I did the first one. And so then I continued on and I just repeated the pattern eight times over and over and over again going through. And the reason I like to make these tutorials, I know a lot of people are like, this is not nail art, even though I call it a nail art tutorial. You could do this design on nails if you wanted to. That's one thing that I just like to say, this could definitely be interpreted and changed and worked into a nail design for for the first part of it. The other thing is, is if you do nail art and you have the supplies for it, there are so many other uses for them. I used gel polish to attach my rhinestones and rhinestones that are intended for nail art. The multi-surface paint, not so much. That's more of just a craft supply, but in general, your nail art supplies are versatile and usable and you don't have to just stick to applying them to nails. And I try to promote that as much as possible that your nail art supplies are and your nail art skills, supplies and skills and everything that you learn doing nail art can be applied to so many other art circumstances. So I like to make these videos every once in a while just to kind of, I don't know, remind people that they don't have to just do nail art on nails. Because I do nail art on all sorts of things. I've got, I do 3D acrylic stuff on a variety of things. I have one thing that's a little bit more on the interesting side that I did with nail art is I, my brother likes fish and fishing and that sort of thing. And I found a toilet roll holder that looked like a, a wide mouth bass, but it was missing a fin. And I knew that he would love it. So I made a fin for him to fix his fish, his toilet fish with acrylic. And so that's one of those circumstances and it blended in so easy. And I don't know of a different medium that would have worked as well as acrylic did. So you can really use your acrylic and everything for all sorts of wacky uses. I know that one is a little bit outlandish, a toilet fish, but yeah. So I just wanted to mention that. And so then I decided that the little point on the tips of my petals looked a little bit empty. So I added three little pull marks. So just with, when you're doing these, you just kind of want to press down and then pull up and release the brush as you're bringing it um, towards the point. And when you get these, when you get kind of like the gist of making those, it is so easy. I know the first time you're like, okay, all I get is a line. I don't get that nice little um, tapered appearance. It just doesn't turn out right. Just keep practicing with those because eventually you'll be able to do those in your sleep. And they're one of the easiest things. You just have to kind of get the, get the handle on it. And so then between each of my larger petals, I'm going to be adding just a couple interlocking lines. So I started out with one that bridges between them and then I added three on each side. So like I said before, this is another circumstance where I didn't have a plan or any sort of rhyme or reason. I'm just kind of working with what, what I see and adding things where I think they need to be where it looked a little empty. So that's all I did for this entire pattern. And that's kind of the great thing about working with something like a mandala or a lace type pattern or henna styling is that you can kind of just let the, let the item you're painting speak to you. I also just painted a very similar design on, I filled up one of my notebooks and I had to replace it. So I got a plain white one and I painted it because things are so much more interesting if you paint them yourself instead of buying something that's pre-patterned. So a lot of things I do have are decorated by myself, but I painted a similar design on there and it was the same thing. I just kind of did it as I went. So then with gel top coat, like I said, I'm going to be attaching rhinestones. So on the top in that top row in the little loops that do not have a polka dot. So every other one, I added one of those little rhinestones that I said I didn't know what to do with. And I have a lot of them. As you can see, I have half a wheel of these little black rhinestones. Actually, they're kind of an iridescent iridescent uh, chrome type color. So I didn't show you curing the top, but you just want to make sure that after you have them all in place, you cure them. Around the side though, cure them after you do. I did three, applied three, and then I cured it because as you start to turn it to work on the new side, they might slide some. So at least flash cure them before you move on. So stick three down, cure it a little bit, and then move on. And I also added a little trio down below, just like that going around. And with these, cure them after each one because you don't want them to slide around and change places. And when you're doing a gel top coat, make sure you're using one that has no tacky layer because if you're using one that needs to have, uh, needs to be cleansed, if you try to cleanse it over the top of where you have painted, the painted areas on your lamp, or not lamp, but on your diffuser, you're gonna be removing paint and it's gonna smear and it's gonna be kind of a mess. So make sure you're using one that does not need any sort of tacky layer removal, which is why I did not use builder gel because builder gel, at least mine all needs to be either cleansed or top coated. And so I didn't want to mess around with that. So I wanted to just, I just used 
gel top coat in it. And it worked perfectly fine. It's not like these are going to get, this diffuser is going to get beat up. So I figured the rhinestones will last perfectly well. And then inside on the top of the lamp, I decided to add a row of a little circle of these little rhinestones. I think it's three of the ridges in just to add one last final touch and just make it a little bit more glitzy. I love the glitz and the glamour. So I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. And please share any recreations with me on Facebook or Instagram. If you have questions on the lamp, don't or not lamp, but diffuser, don't hesitate to ask. Once again, there is a link to it in the description box below. So if you're looking for a new essential oil diffuser, check that out and I will see you in my next video. Bye.